our itinerary continues in room 8 with the Mary Magdalene by Donatello. There is no firm documentation of any commission for this sculpture. And therefore, on stylistic grounds, it has been dated to the late phase of the artist's work. It is also likely that it was originally destined for the baptistry, where it stood in the 16th century. In the flood of 1966, the statue suffered extensive damage to its polychrome finish, after which it was restored and brought to the Museo dell'Opera. The sculpture immediately inspired great admiration, especially for its impressive realism, and it was copied and imitated several times, testifying to its strong impact on viewers. The first innovation is the fact that Mary Magdalene is portrayed not as a beautiful young woman, as was usually the case, but in her old age, looking, as Vasari puts it, consumed by fasting and by abstinence. Thus she is shown in a moment of penitence and prayer far removed from the temptations of this world. Donatello deprived the saint of any identifying attribute, for example, a crucifix or the vase of perfumed unguents. Mary Magdalene is standing with her head slightly turned. With her face deeply wrinkled and feverish. And her slender limbs showing muscles and tendons. Her long, cascading hair wraps around her. And hides her anatomy. Notice her hands, beautiful in their realism. Almost touching each other in a gesture of prayer or of supplication. Donatello used wood to render effects of emaciation and angularity. to which he added oakum and stucco for some details. He then painted the entire statue with naturalistic colors and gilt effects.
This realistic and impressive figure expresses the living sense of spiritual tension and profound feelings in the human soul. Without any idealization. This is an undoubted masterpiece, capable of speaking and communicating with the sensibilities of 21st century men and women.